And I want to just share a little information with you because I know a lot of people are paying attention to what's happening in Chicago. And uh, as you're paying attention to what's happening in Chicago, you may wonder why we're, we have so many police officers that are uh, getting away with murder. And that's what I want to talk about today. Uh, why Chicago police officers get away with, with murder. Now, again, I'm a state senator, so I don't, you know, I don't have as much um, say-so in, in, in how things are, are set up in the city of Chicago, but I'm, being a state senator, what my job is really is to create legislation to help to improve people's lives. So I'm moved by the fact that we have all these murders and all this misconduct by police. And because of that, I've been researching, trying to find out, okay, why do these cops keep getting away with murder? What is it that can be done to stop them from, um, you know, being able to just murder people and and walk away and and nothing happens to them? And then a lot of times we have uh, the other other, uh, police officers that are working with the police officers that kill people and they help them get away with murder. So I think it's our job as uh, just as citizens to uh, se- learn as much as we can and do what we can now to improve the lives of the people um, that, that have, have to reside in, the, in these cities and places where we have cops getting away with murder. Now, you all may have heard about Laquan McDonald and how he was shot 16 times. And in those 16 times, he got shot, uh, there were other officers there and nobody uh, came forth to say, uh, at least we didn't hear of anyone coming forth to say, you know what, uh, Van Dyke actually murdered Laquan McDonald. Nobody said that. The only thing we heard was that uh, he was that Laquan McDonald was wielding a knife. Well, why did all the officers that were there and watched Van Dyke shoot uh, Laquan 16 times, why is it that they had nothing to say about the fact that he was being he had gotten murdered? Why is it that everybody's report said that Laquan McDonald launched toward him with the knife and he was defending himself? Why? The reason why is because the police officers all work together as one unit. They're all there to try to protect each other. They're out on the street, they're in the dangerous situations many times. And they're working together to protect each other and cover each other all the time because it, and a lot of times they may feel like it's us against them. Um, and sometimes they're bad officers on the field, but if they speak up, if they come out and talk about it, they could put themselves in jeopardy, uh, their own lives in jeopardy because then the other officers may or may not support them when they need help most. And they don't want to end up in some alley shot to death or beat to death by someone uh, why the other officers sit back and do nothing. So the vast majority of the police officers in Chicago are good officers, very good officers that are committed to protecting and to serving. But we have some, a few, not that many, but a few that is simply focusing only on, um, you know, actually getting their job done. I guess that's the way they see it at any cost, no matter whose life it costs. Uh, right now, I, from the research I've done, I see that only about 10% of the people who have got complaints against them, the police that have got complaints against them, only only 10% of them are um, are getting multiple complaints. They're repeaters. They're constantly being uh, getting complaints against them for shooting people and for police misconduct and all kinds of things like that. So, out of all the people who get who have gotten complaints, and like I said, the vast majority of police officers are good. Uh, we have 10% of those that are uh, getting the most complaints and they're getting them over and over and over again and they're being harbored and they're being protected uh, by innocent police officers who are just a part of the system. And we, so what we got to do is try to find a way to, to weed them out. We got to weed them out because if we don't weed them out, nobody else is. No cops are going to come and say, we're going to weed out the police, the bad police, because their lives are in jeopardy as well. They're walking around with a bunch of guys with guns and a bunch of women with guns who all stick together no matter what. So we as citizens have to speak up and we have to find a way to make uh, these these officers that are, that are being harbored, uh, that are being coddled and, and kept on the force because just because they wear that uniform, we got to find a way to weed them out. So one of the things that I'm looking at as a state senator 
is to um, m- make sure that when s- there's a video or any kind of documentation that captures uh, the actions of the police on the force, uh, that those videos and that documentation becomes available to the public. Because we cannot count on those that are, that are part of the system to protect us. We have to find ways to protect ourselves. So there's something called a Freedom of Information Act. And usually with the Freedom of Information Act, if there's any public document, we can just ask for it. It's called a FOIA request. We can FOIA uh, and request um, the video or the body cam recording or whatever. But when it comes to police shootings, many times those are considered exempt because they say it might impede a fair trial or it may cause people who are not shouldn't be a part of this case and they end up being brought into um, brought into the case as well and so we want to be sure that we protect the innocent so we don't want to allow that uh, that video to, to uh, be released and that's what happened with Laquan McDonald they didn't let it they didn't they didn't they didn't release it they said it was exempt and it, it took a court order in order to have it released well the bill that I'm presenting now Senate Bill 2210 what it would do is it would require that if a police or the agency believe that the police recording should be exempt, then they have to get a court order. If they don't have a court order saying it's exempt, they have to release it. And that's going to help us to get access to more information. But that's not going to solve the problem. You know, we have to do a lot of different things to solve the problem. It's going to, what that's going to do is give us information. But still, you know, even now they destroy the records. If a police has a, a, a complaint against them for misconduct or some kind of allegation, those complaints are only kept for a few years and then they're destroyed. So you may find out maybe 10 years from now do, through DNA or whatever else we come up with to, to, to find, help us to solve crimes, you may find out that, you know, in, in reality, uh, this guy was innocent. And, um, and when we go back to look at the police records about it, they've been destroyed already. So one of the bills that I'm supporting now and pushing now is that no records are ever destroyed if, if there's a complaint against an officer. Because we have to trust our police officers. We have to feel safe when they come around. And if we're not feeling safe when they come around, there's something wrong with that. And that's not the case all over the district. It's not the case all over the city or the state. Uh, in some areas, when the police come, people feel safe. It just so happens that in uh, Chicago, in the African-American community, and in minority community, Latinos community, and, and other minority communities, we don't feel safe. So that's what this is all about. So God bless you, and just let you know that we got to keep beating the drums. We cannot be silent, because the moment we be, be silent, that's the moment when evil will ramp through our community. It will run rampage through our community. So God bless you.